Hey everyone, I'm Tomo 64 here, and today we're going to continue with some more Crash Twin Sanity for the PlayStation 2. Now, we're here in Totem Hook'em. Easily one of my favorite segments of the game. Except for this very beginning portion of it. You have to help me, Crash. You heard them. They want to destroy our island home, humiliate and enslave you, and steal my brain! How I envy the simple life of the tribe's folk. What have I got? What have I got? What have I got? Living in harmony with Mother Nature, the noble boar, the humble bumblebee. Ah! So now we're playing through this segment where we have to guide Cortex, who's blinded by bees, to get through all this stuff. So we have to activate traps, activate a couple of things. And in case you were ever thinking, why not just spin the bees away? You can't touch Cortex. Like, unfortunately, there's an entire hitbox around them for some reason. I'm pretty sure it has something to do with the bees. <gasps> no! Oh my god, the worst way I could have done any. <laughs> oh, poor Cortex. But more importantly, poor me, because I have to sit through this whole cutscene again just because I died. Remember, unskippable cutscenes. There's nothing you can do about this. At least you guys get the luxury to just get this stuff skipped for you via editing. So our kids these days don't have to worry about anything. Except literally everything. Especially with what's been going on for the past year. We're in March, and this is, and I just don't feel good about saying how it's March now. This is my birth month, and after last year, I feel pretty freaking destroyed. And I'm just kind of hoping that the kids who were like, who have to put up with freaking virtual school and stuff like that, are gonna be okay. Cause like, they're the ones who need like some reassurance after everything's happened. Alright, now we don't have to worry about the cutscene again. But yeah. And it gets and it just keeps building What I touched the button! Alright, you know what? Whatever. It just keeps building up and up. Oh frick. You really need, <gasps> You really don't want to spin on those. Yeah, that, that's not nearly as long as what I just saw earlier. Not even close. But yeah, you don't, you actually don't want to spin on the detonators this time around. Because they do prolong it. I was away from it! You know what? Maybe I should spin at it, just in case. I was away from it! I'll do it one more time, and if I die again, I'm definitely just going to have to back off. Thank you. Thankfully, those don't pop back off. Back off. Be on the lookout for gems, by the way. There's like, I think one or two that's around here. Maybe even three. I only found one so far. I know there's another one somewhere out here. At least another one. Probably on the next segment coming up. Because Cortex just can't have a good day. Oh, right here. Yeah, be don't do that. Don't do what I did. Like, you might die from doing that. And now there's a freaking bear chasing him. So on top of everything that's already on him, a bear is now chasing him. What kind of luck do you need to have for all that to happen at once? No, even Crash doesn't have bad luck like that. And no, you can't do anything about the bear. Like, I tried on in multiple instances if we're not be able to squish him, but you just can't. That's an impossibility. And the bear is just gone. Oh boy, so now he's been kidnapped. Guess who's got to save him? That's right. 
Okay, more dark areas, but th this one's actually not that bad. I say as I die, alright. You know what, I saw an extra life in there, and I'm about to get it anyway, so... Look at that, got that, ex got that life back. Not even a problem. So, if you're new to Crash from Sanity, I would say you should start getting accustomed to spinning after jumping great distances. Just because if you get caught in the animation, depending on where you're at, it can be a big inconvenience. Especially in this section, because now we have to deal with stealth. My least favorite my least favorite aspect of video games. Because now we have to wait, wait, and wait behind these reeds, and then we have to jump around here quickly before he starts looking again. If you get caught, he, for some reason his god he'll just summon God and just freaking throw spears at you. You have to wait. There's no, there's no way around it. You can't like once you're caught. By the way, you're you're just forced to stand there and just take it. The game doesn't give you the opportunity to just not. Oh my god! I could have went for the TNT. So here's where it gets troublesome. If this were any other crash game, I'd be able to spin that TNT. Break it and then just uh, break that log and just get back here. But we don't have that, so we just have to take the the long way around. Now you have to go inside the boat just to make sure he doesn't detect you. You can crawl, but I don't think you'd really want to do that. I'm not risking it yet. At least the music is lit. Like, the music is carrying this hard. But trust me, the fun doesn't stop there. Because now, we have to hide against this guy and deal with some boars. And if the boars hit you while you're trying to hide, it, br it briefly pops you up because of the hit animation. And if you don't hide, well, good luck because you're just dead at that point. Like, it's not a hard section, I just do not like stealth elements in games, period. It's just not my thing, I just do not like having to wait around half the time. Maybe if I was in a real life scenario like that, I'd probably appreciate it more, but... Right now, not so much. Oh gosh. Come on, I hit you! Get back! I am not going for those lives. But yeah, this music is so freaking great. So what they did so something oh crap. Something they actually did here is that you can actually use these rocks to skim over this. And if you skim it over there and hit the nitros. Wait, did it get caught by the seagull? Are you serious? That's kinda cool. Uh oh <laughs> he really hit it. That's nice! That, that wasn't nice at all. Another big, another big down with this game. There is no drop shadow when you get to a certain point, a certain height in this game. What, what? A certain height in this game. Some cases, you just don't have one at all. So, it just becomes like this trivia of where you're at. And if you're not at the right spot, you're dead. At least they give you the double jump so you can adjust yourself, but it just does not feel good to do that when you're already very high up. It just seems counterintuitive to me, because like you're already having to struggle just to get up there as is. Yeah, another cool thing is that the double jump can happen so late. No, I was right there. I might just skip one and just see if I can just make it like that, cause like I'm not leaving that gem there. You know how this, you know how this works, or at least you should.
Alright, if I die now, I'll be fine. I don't die like that, though. That's just embarrassing. Alright, there we go. And this platforming stuff? I kind of wish Crash 1 had something like this. Not gonna lie. More specifically, the insane version, because, like, this would have been very cool to have in the game. But we're not done yet. Because now we have to explore this whole area, not just for the gems, but to get Cortex out of his conundrum. It is important that I must add, if in case you're playing this game side by side, that you do not get Cortex as soon as the worm is up there. You wait, like, wait, wait till you get the other stuff first. Come on, I was talking! I hate this. I, I know, I'm polished game, but bruh. Alright. Speaking of the worm, though. You have to slam and follow this worm throughout the whole level just to get the Cortex. Don't bother trying to find a way around that. How many gems am I missing? Three? I think the last three are here anyway, but... Such a classic theme that we just get to listen to an uh, and freaking and freaking Apaka just cause of Apaka. I feel like I haven't set that. I haven't set that in a while. And I'm just messing it up. And like Alapaka, man, I don't know why. How am I messing this up? I've I was just talking acapella. There we go. I don't know why I was saying like all this other stuff. Yeah, don't touch that yet. Frey, I think if I did a, if I do a good enough jump, double jump and slam, I could just make it up there no problem. Camera. Ah. Uh. Okay. Dang it. And now to end it off in Crash and classic Crash Bandicoot style, a ch a chase sequence. Man, I haven't had these in a minute, and I really screwed it off. All right, here we go. So what I usually like doing, personally, is that I try to use the double jump as little as possible in this chase sequence because. With a good enough jump, you can actually make a lot of these jumps in Crash to Insanity with barely the second jump. But you know, I'm not against the idea that the jump is there. It's just something I want to personally do for the sake of challenge myself, because unfortunately these guys are slower than molasses. You can't hit these guys, you can't hit either, so you're just going to have to run it. And that's the chase sequence, pretty sure. You could probably fit a whole Crash 1 level on that. Hopefully we get out of here soon enough. Now, believe it or not, the video actually does not stop here just yet. It should, like you would think it should, but there's actually a little bit more going to this part of Totem Hook'em, so... I mean, ending Totem Hook'em, so... Uh, let me get to this point here, then I'll talk about ending the video. Unless it doesn't start automatically. Okay, it doesn't stop automatically. Okay, let's wait. Alright, so I guess I'll stop here. There's a little bit much to take in this. Because there's a lot of cutscenes in the next part. And I do mean a lot. 
So, uh, yeah, that's our tourism boss. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy, uh, stay insane, and most importantly, stay warped. Stay warped.